Are you ready for more stupidity from the turtles? Too bad! Ah! Now again, I really do like this show, and it's still got a lot of genuinely funny moments in it. But it's also got a lot of funny moments in it for how stupid they were, and this is the top 20 of them. Not naming that lily after me was the greatest mistake the horticultural community could make. A mistake that the whole world will pay dearly for, I assure you. You know, there's comedically weak reasons to become a villain, and then there's... Why, turtles? Just why? Today the petunias, tomorrow the planet. <laughs> no! But this episode gets even better. Raph mishears a conversation and believes he's dying, so he dresses up like one of the four musketeers. Cause it was so good the first time. And becomes a hero who fights crime. Just call me the Green Defender. Raph, I don't want to alarm you or anything, but fighting crime is what you did before! But don't worry, none of that was the dumb part. This is... Oh, the automatic sprinklers aren't working! They must be jammed! There's only one way to turn them on. Yeah, it's risky. Good thing I remember that heat makes things rise. I guess all those hang gliding lessons from Michelangelo weren't a total waste after all. You know, that totally works. Next time there's a fire near you, just grab a sheet and fly away. Ah! Warning, don't really. Surprise, it doesn't work that way. Now here's a real shocker for you. Sometimes the Shredder's plans to kill the turtles were slightly convoluted. Krang happens to have some eggs from Dimension X that look like meatballs, of course, so Shredder and Baxter put the eggs on some pizza that are part of a giveaway contest, rig the contest so the turtles will win them, and hope they microwave them because that's how the eggs incubate. And, of course, they hatch aliens. Alright, they're not actually aliens, but they're still better than any of the aliens the show actually did. You just lost control! Now the creatures are out of control! You know, Shredder, next time, just poison the pizza. The turtles meet a freaking mer dude from Atlantis, an enthralling premise to be sure, and it gets better. He's been away from Atlantis for 200 years looking for more of his kind, and the last stop on his way home was the sewers. Guess he thought his people might have taken to eating shit. Probably the most reasonable thought in this episode. Cause after all, these things are clearly a superior race. Look at the stupid thing trying to move. <laughs> and even though the rest of the Atlanteans are human, they're about as smart as Mer shitter. At last, our king has come! Uh, gee, you don't suppose they mean me? So because Bebop is a strange creature, they make him king, just like that. What in the seven seas are you? Alim Silikan. You must be the true king of Atlantis. Another strange thing, it must be the king. Oh wait, no, look at that, that must be the king. Oh no, wait, look at that, that must be the king. Oh no, that must be a real king. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm beginning to see how Bebop got the gig. I'm no king. But you are the strange creature of which the prophecy speaks. If he's never heard of this prophecy, when did it get made? Were the people back 200 years ago just like, well, if that guy ever comes back, he's king, I guess. Why? I don't know, he's weird. And what a king. Someone who can barely get around your city. I just see him getting locked out and knocking on the glass. Hey guys, it's me, your king. Let me back in, please. I need to rule you. No, no, don't elect that crab, your new leader. This crab is weird. Our new leader. Damn it. Zack, the stupid kid who called himself the fifth 
turtle. You're not Kirby, you stupid kid. This was just a problem certain shows would add. Annoying kids to help out the heroes. And I can speak for myself as a kid when I seen this as well. We didn't want to see kids in these shows. They weren't some kind of avatar for ourselves. They were just in the way. And certain episodes gave not only Zack, but his brother as well just way too much to do. Another turtle adventure concluded. <laughs> Time to leave. Hold it right there, Mr. Mock Turtle. Hi, guys. That's the second time you've gotten in our way. Well, I was just trying to help. I'm almost 14, and my name is Zack. You really messed things up back there, Zack. So whenever you saw this face... <laughs> it meant not gonna be a good episode. Just like when you see my face. <laughs> So yeah, this was more of a character than a moment, but you know what? FUCK EVERY MOMENT WITH HIM! <laughs> the Rat King in this episode THINKS of redoing the one thing that actually made him a threat before, using his control over rats to bring Splinter under his command. Okay, even there, he wasn't the actual threat, but at least he had someone competent on his side that way. And guess what? He's going to abandon that plan to instead capture Vernon and Irma. Again. And you are my new subjects. But we're not rats. No, but you will be. Yes, the Rat King got a hold of some diluted mutagen and uses it to make the most powerful people he can actually get a hold of into rats. The most powerful he can get a hold of. Long enough to do anything with, anyway. So this time he finally succeeds in controlling Vernon and Irma, briefly. <sighs> Take your successes where you can get them, Rat King. Of course he only uses them to try and steal crates of cheese. Yeah, unrefrigerated crates of cheese. Bet that stuff is great. Not that it even matters, because he doesn't even succeed at stealing moldy cheese. But who were these were rats? Perhaps no one will ever know for sure. A hot kimono? What makes me think this is the start of something wacky? Haha, <laughs> you're being a little too kind this time, Raph. So, first off, this is a gangster episode. There were two things the 87 Turtles cartoon just really need to stay away from. Aliens and gangsters. In this case, it's Don Tertelli, yeah, and he's having his men steal all the kimonos in New York, and it just so happens to be at the same time that Splinters is being dry cleaned. It's also the only one he owns, apparently, so it's kind of the worst luck in the universe that the one time he gets the shit smell off it is when some very specific heists are going on. Not only that, but we got April's annoying Aunt Aggie to tag along this time. She's like Agatha Christie. That's the joke, so she talks about clues constantly. And be amazed, none of that's the actual dumb moment. That's reserved for the reason behind the commotion. Kimono robberies. Why did you want all those kimonos anyway? Well, if you have to know, there's a map woven into one of them. I had to grab them all to find the right one. One of the kimonos has a map to a treasure on it. The lost treasure of Nakamura, apparently. This ends up being on Splinter's kimono, of course, meaning if you didn't already get by the name, the treasure would be somewhere in Japan, so why the hell did this dumbass think the kimono with the map on it would be in New York? And he had no clue, apparently, of what it even looked like. He's just gonna steal every damn kimono in New York to try and get it. And of course, Splinter never noticed a map on his clothing all these years. What do you think this is, a cartoon? 
Planet of the Turtleoids contains so much stupid, I plan to talk about it separately at some point, but here's a particular highlight. Bebop and Rocksteady forget who they are. Hey, this is the same zoo where we came from before we was mutated. Wow, this place has great hysterical significance. Bebop and Rocksteady were humans. They were in a gang before becoming Shredder's lackeys. This was referenced even just earlier this same season. How do you guys forget that? Apparently in the Archie TMNT comics, there's something about Bebop and Rocksteady having memories from the animals they got mutated from contact with. But that'd mean the turtles should all suddenly get Hamato Yoshi memories flooding through their heads. We are all Hamato Yoshi! Oh shit, I'm gonna go chew on the wall. Shredder has a rust beam. <laughs> Uh, of course, and naturally this means sending Bebop and Rocksteady to rust up the Eiffel Tower. Uh, he had a good reason. This is the last you'll ever see of this enchanted city, and perhaps any other city as well. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty funny if you think about it. Anyway, after killing several people around the Eiffel Tower, the turtles eventually get the ray away from them and... You're as incompetent as my two mutants. Don't count on it, Tim Brown. Frozen. Oil me. Oil me. Uh, not unless they rusted your internal organs as well, Shredder. Oh no, those pieces of metal on my costume that have nothing to do whatsoever with my movement are rusted. I can't move. Rat King teams up with gangsters, already set up to be a classic. Well, after covering the city with rats to create mass hysteria and make places easy to rob, the gangsters double-cross the Rat King. Take good care of him, partner. Partner? Now that I've got him, who needs you? <laughs> they double-cross the Rat King with the city covered in rats. The things he can control. No, he does not use this to his advantage. The thought never even crosses his mind. Rat King, even with the obvious opportunity to take over handed to him, or even just get revenge, still fails. Did you think gravity was an issue for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Well, not anymore. Okay, this is another example of forgetting what kind of cartoon you're in, and falling from extreme heights has always been a thing they've implied would mean death on multiple occasions, and then this happens. <laughs> In the later Red Sky seasons of Ninja Turtles, they introduced a new villain, a stupid alien, Lord Dreg. After I drain the mutagen from the turtles and absorb your mental energy, I shall transform myself into the most powerful and intelligent being in all the universe. Alright, so he drains Krang's mind, basically, so he'd have his brains. Yeah, Krang is a brain, alright, but that just mean he'd have in his head his intellect and memories, not this. You can't get away, Shredder. I possess Krang's memories as well as the turtles. So I know just how you think. What? What? It's not that dumb. Yes, it is. If Shredder hadn't have cut his cord, would he have popped out of Drag's forehead as well? And this is when they're trying to be more serious again. Good job. 
Okay, first part of this stupid moment. A child invents a solar magnet for a science fair, and it actually works. How did he get the materials to even build something that powerful if we even want to go with the extreme child genius to the max on this? Then again, he is Vernon's nephew. Oh, and of course, it starts destroying the Earth. We're stuck! Gunshots. This intense heat is popping all the corn. We've been receiving reports of intense heat damage from such faraway places as the Paris Wax Museum. Oh, oh, oh. we're getting warm, all right. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. So, you know, all life on Earth has just been destroyed if the sun has gotten close enough to do any of that. This is a moment that goes across several episodes. Shredder's complete unwillingness to remove his armor and especially his face mask. And this wasn't always the case. He has done it a few times, but then suddenly is like, No! I must never take this off! Even when going in disguise, I'll just put a cloak on or something over my armor! Shredder, you're a human being. You can just wear different clothes to go somewhere in disguise. And guess what? It'd be more effective. But really, my favorite moment of this comes in Invasion of the Punk Frogs, where Shredder holographically projects an image of himself wearing different clothing over himself instead of changing clothes. Oh, man. They've been wearing this same shirt for days. People are going to start noticing. Ah, there. So much easier than changing. Shredder and Splinter have an accident and get their minds switched into each other's bodies. And once Shredder gains his bearings and realizes what's going on, this is his big plan. <laughs> This is the second time today Master Splinter's made us do this. Do you turtles get the feeling that there's something not right about Master Splinter? Splinter would never make us do chores. It's gonna be Shredder. He doesn't use this opportunity to learn the location of the turtles' lair or even lure them into a trap or something. He uses it to... make the turtles do chores. Wow, the place is really looking good! April O'Neil, what are you doing here? I just wanted to see how you were doing. Just fine. Now leave. The turtles have no time to chatter with the likes of you. Ha 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 ha! I'll have this sewer sparkling more than Splinter ever could have imagined! The opening scene of this episode has the turtles trying out a cure on Michelangelo to try and stop their extra silly mutations from happening, but instead, we get this. Uh, dudes? I feel kind of funny. Again, these are some pretty weird things for a mutant, particularly lasers, but here's what makes this the best. It wasn't real. <sighs> it's a good thing we ran a virtual reality simulation on that demutation ray before we tried it on ourselves. Even if you somehow created the most amazing holographic technology in the universe, do you know what most simulations still need? Test data to be fed into them. Where did it pull this from? Magic? <laughs> Shut up, Merlin! It not only perfectly recreated the turtles and their lair, but can accurately predict the effects of an untested cure on the turtles. Well, holy shit, might as well have that computer predict everything before you do it. Hey, will we beat whoever this week? Run a simulation! It said no duh. Ugh, 
Herder himself could just be a stupid moment for the series. He was really just kind of a pointless addition to the team and added nothing anew that April hadn't already brought to the series. His aim was to be trained by Hamato Yoshi, so he somehow tracked Splinter down with the turtles into the sewers without even knowing that he was a rat now. I am Hamato Yoshi. You... You're a mutant too? Nothing gets past you! But this stupid moment has to do with Carter's own transformation! He gets a bit of mutagen on his hand, which gives him an unstable switch form like the Turtles this season, but here's what Carter turns into. Gotta be strong! Gotta be strong! Gotta be strong! Whoa. What's happening to me? I'm changing! I'm... that despite that this looking like it ruins Carter's clothing every time, nah, they just transform along with them into, uh, nothing. Uh, clothing mutants, whatever. <laughs> Apparently rigging a pizza contest in hopes the turtles would hatch alien eggs wasn't convoluted enough, so Shredder takes it to the next level. He opens a pizza parlor just to try and poison the turtles. You know, it's a really good thing that the turtles even ever bother ordering from there, or you know, this might have been a whole lot of effort for nothing. And in the end, it still was. Shredder, how long do I have to wait before your pizza parlor delivers the turtles to me? Soon, Krang. The turtles won't be able to resist a pizzeria where they can order any ingredients they want. You know, I love this even more. Shredder has been running a pizzeria for weeks, possibly months, just for this scheme. Storming the sewers with a horde of foot soldiers looking for their lair probably would have taken less time. Shredder, just sometimes you are amazing. So, from that same episode, the Rat King manages to out-pathetic Shredder running a pizza shop for months somehow with his grand scheme of stealing a pizza from the Turtles. Hmm, avocado and peanut butter? Oh yeah, that's my favorite. <laughs> Aiming really high, aren't we, Rat King? Seriously, this is what this guy is reduced to trying to do just to gain a pathetic little victory in his life. You suck, Rat King. We've heard some dumb schemes from Shredder and the Rat King, but the giant brain somehow came up with the most asinine ones. They live in a sewer. That smell won't frighten them away. This potion isn't to frighten them. It's to make them fall in love. Crying goddess of love! Guys, just poison them. With regular poison! You don't need to compromise them if they're already dead! Or, you know, you could just attack them, maybe put this waste of time into a plan to bring that rock soldier army you have after them, not try to play matchmaker. Love? Yes, head over flippers! With the very first Male they lay their eyes on. Crying the crazy old love woman. Also, yes, that is Townsend Coleman, the regular voice of Michelangelo, doing Krang in this episode. Didn't you? You played Krang once, didn't you? I did, and I regret it. Make them fall in love. You know, I'm impressed, Krang, for being a giant brain, you still ended up with the top two spots on the list of idiocy. And beating out Rat King is a feat. 
And here we go, the dumbest thing I seen in the whole of the 87 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon. In your opinion, not mine. Okay, boss. Now can you tell us why we're filling these balloons with helium? Keep on filling them and don't ask stupid questions. Gray, why are they filling the balloons with helium? I guess it's safe now to tell you. I've sent this same treasure map to the city's most notorious criminal ringleaders. It shows the location of a chest filled with stolen treasure buried on a secret tropical island. What secret tropical island? The one my foot soldiers are building at this very moment. Once all the greedy, treasure-hungry criminals are aboard the island, I plan to cut the chain and all my conversation will just go floating away tonight. And I alone will be the boss of the entire underworld. Make the criminals float away on an island. Why, Crane? Guess what? The other criminals in town don't affect affect you. Your goal is to conquer the planet. You apparently succeeded at amassing a large empire at your command in Dimension X. So what happened? Is this really how you did that? Spent your time luring people not really an issue at all to you to an island to float them away? Remember those fucking rock men you have? Crush their damn heads if you honestly think there's some kind of a threat or you know that second army of robotic ninjas at your disposal could use some work again. I, I just uh, floating them away. Why would it even work? Oh wait, there must have been hot air around, never mind. So for a completely asinine plan to get rid of people that aren't even a threat to anything, Krang's float the stupid gangster idiots away on an island is the best of the dumbest. Stupidity in a half shell. Or a brain shell, or a brain dimension next, or uh, whatever, done. And that was the top 40 dumbest moments from the teenage. What's going on? How dare you fail us? It's time to float you away. Ah! This is pretty dumb. Absolut gut. Hey dudes, why are we at the Ghostbusters firehouse? I don't know, I'm just wondering why Shredder's been behind us this whole time. I'm not worried about him, I'm more worried about that skull guy. Yes, because the skull guy is going to kill uh, uh, there's no skull guy, huh? What do you think this is, a cartoon? <laughs>